I made up right. today. It's called the uh, Rig Run Down Wrist. Because I was watching my buddy today, a bunch of uh, videos of professional guitarists talking about their guitar setups live. It's pretty interesting. All right. And I learned to relearn a jazz chord, a diminished seventh. One of those, what the hell is that jazz chords? All right, so sounds go. good. Welcome to the Two Lonely Boys in Canoe. Hey, how are you? Hey. What's happening, Trevor? Hey. So we got Gorgeous George, Chris Evans. Yeah, I'm here. We got the producer, Gradient, of course. What up? And myself, Trevor Olsen, also known as Gravel Shits, and Ferrari the Kitty hiding in my room. So there you go. There you go. And beautiful Eugene all around us. Yeah, we're rocking and rolling. So what's been happening, Trevor? Uh, today I today was my second day off, and I uh, didn't have to do laundry today, so I uh, didn't have to use your AK while doing laundry today. Very true. <laughs> you know, I'm always cold like ice cubes. So that's it's how a I good roll. day. You yeah, know? good song. But uh, I went and jammed with a buddy that trying to make up some like hardcore riffs and see what happens. Lord. So a new chord and learn some uh, new guitar tools that I cannot afford, but someday. So I was like, you ever Damn. smash a guitar on stage? No, it's too expensive. You I ever wanted to? No. There's people I wanted to hit in the head, but I hope that the guitar is in good condition, but the person's face is not in so good condition. So when I see a when I see a guitar getting smashed versus a person, it's like ah, it depends on the person. Well, you've probably been at a lot of live music shows. I've been right? in a lot of mosh pits. I've so heard a lot of people. Have you ever seen something go wrong on stage where yes. somebody's doing like a guitar swing and then the strap breaks? I did see. I did see a, like, see like, a guy once. He was taking a bass and he was like swinging around. Yeah. And a guy was trying to get on the trying to get on the stage and just clocked him right in the face <laughs> and then he just fell back and then the crowd just pulled him away like yeah. just like an ocean just pulling you into a tide and i was like i'm not going to get on the stage i'm not trying to get cracked mm -hmm. in the face by a bass in front of a thousand <laughs> people but other than that yeah i think the craziest uh thing i ever saw was a guy do a stage dive where there wasn't a ton of people <laughs> and there was like six folks and they tried to catch him man but it was just too much forward momentum he ended up knocking back the like last two people on the ground it was pretty fun Damn. <laughs> i was just walking away i was like i can't do nothing here man yeah. just let it be that was like from nirvana he fucking took himself out with a bass yes he threw it up like 25 yeah. feet in the air and it came down Ooh. on his head cracked and knocked Ooh. him the fuck out like for a while like it did damage you gotta be careful it's not easy out there rocking and rolling especially like bass <laughs> like solid body like electric basses are fucking heavy like I mean, it's not the same as a piano being dropped on. You imagine Still. being Mozart and shit. This That's... fucking piano cracked me. <laughs> well, if you have a piano falling out, you're probably in a Looney Tunes episode. In that case, <laughs> you're a cartoon and this it's okay. Black and white skit. Yeah, you're going to have little birds just like flying over you in a circle. And your your teeth clouds. are piano keys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the, light, the, like the light bulb just explodes over you and... Um, those... Walt Disney comes along and says, I can take this for myself. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, fuck you, Walt Disney. Asshole. Yeah, he did a lot of weird stuff in the yeah. Boy or Boy Scouts of America. I don't know also, what that's all about. He was also a fan of the Jews. He was also a fan of the Hitler, too. So well, that's what I mean. He had his, uh, his money and priorities elsewhere. Yeah. Not, but... not in the Jewish people's favor. No. 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 But... no. I'm sure I'm sure Disney Plus would try to get their self into any synagogue now if they could, but So is he frozen? Is that the whole thing with Disney? Is he frozen? He's frozen like a princess, yes. His head is, is being being uh what is it, cryogenically frozen. It's like and Futurama. It's like and Nixon when and we have guys. the technology we're gonna reinfuse his brain to come back and do other weird shit. We'll attach it to like a giant robotic Mickey Mouse. So Can you comes imagine back, a like, cyborg oh, hey Mickey there, children. Mouse? Oh, you're all gonna die! Oh, what a take over the world! Oh, that was that his plan war. the entire time. Yes, he was like, "I'll build the most ridiculous what animatronic." He was big into animatronics for a while, man. It's not Wait, to say he, he wouldn't get time. into cyborg stuff. I feel like the the Mickey Mouse parody has been done by. Family Guy South and Park. South Park. Ridiculously. It's yes, kind of I, hard to I, even keep doing it because they kind of yeah. captured it. Yeah. I love the scene in Very South true. Park where... But I had a fire cabin... I'm not blaming you. Yeah. <laughs> but I had a fire cabin that talked like Mickey Mouse. So for, for a few months of my life, every morning, we're like, oh, make sure your tools are sharp. Oh, drink water. Like, he had all the water. time. 
That wasn't like a that wasn't like a, a cartoon joke. That was my life. That's a lot. He had so. low T. He just had a lot of low testosterone, so, so he had a really high voice. My version was a little more intense than the cartoon version, but yeah, it's it's been overplayed. Moving so on. Mickey Mouse had a great uh, joke in uh, South Park where he's floating away like the Macy's Day balloon, yes. and he's like, "There goes Mickey back to Valhalla." So he will slumber and wait for another thousand years to reign. <laughs> so crazy. I want to talk about any plug shout outs anyone wants to do real quick. I don't know. Well, well we were talking about anti Semitism a little bit. My friend Gordon Lafer's running to be reelected to this to the four J school board. Jewish? Yeah. Very cool. He's a nice. cool guy. Nice. He's very brilliant. He's a UO prof. He's written some good books. He's a very strong labor yeah. champion. So he like wants you guys to have rights and shit. Yeah, yeah. Jewish people get a bad rap, man. Jewish people are some of the coolest people I've ever known. I've known some really, really, I've known some really cool Jewish people. I got to go to a bar bat mitzvah one time, and it was a lot of fun. Well, the area that I grew up in in South Florida had a ton of Jewish people in a community. There was like an Orthodox Jewish community, and then there was like uh, like they walked to to synagogue every Saturday because you're not supposed to use like technology and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so you'd see them all like decked out and they're like black stuff in Florida, like foot in it to, yeah. to synagogue. And you just be like, man, they must be hot. But no, some really nice people. Some of the nicest folks I've ever met. <laughs> True. <laughs> so I've go out re- and vote, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you don't want to. That's the case. Voting's cool. I think voting at the smaller level is probably the only way it works. The higher you get up, the yeah. more the more reason there is not to cast a vote or not to ca- count a vote casting. Ready? You want to talk about today with your whole thing or no? I mean, yeah, I could talk about a couple of things he's done since being on the board. That was really cool. He thought I was coming from a city council meeting to to come here at six. Okay, but uh, that's why I thought. I'm sorry. So no, what, what was the it? local news? All good. It was a campaign kickoff rally. Okay, and it was For at Tsunami Books. Yeah, yeah. He's, Tis the season. Yeah, he's a. One of the main things he doubled the amount of librarians, and uh, in because there was a long slide in librarians being yeah. funded. Yes. They doubled it. They brought librarians back to elementary schools for the first time in twenty years. Nice. Um, and you know it's a stoner show, so I don't remember much of the other things. What was <laughs> okay. name? That's a guy part again? of a stoner show. Not remembering right. some of the topics. Yeah. But he talked a lot about you know just trying to not make school like something that just like beats the creativity out of kids, like all this hyper testing and yeah teach, and. Yeah. and, and he wants to empower teachers and students, and and there's a lot of administrative district bullshit where, especially school boards, like to fucking soar at thirty thousand feet, look down on everyone, 100%. hire a superintendent, and then just back the superintendent because it's off yep. their ass. Exactly, it's easy to pass the buck in educational systems. I think a lot of the times the people that you want to empower or are some of the administrators and the teachers and stuff like that, but unfortunately they're at the lowest part of the total also pole. the whole issue of school shooting too so now there's the whole concern of like should we train these school teachers in armed and unarmed combat so i can see why like police and also with the pandemic we just had with the whole school being like online like this is a rough time to be a teacher so the public Very education rough. system hasn't been good for a long time in america unfortunately no. we have certain we areas it and it was, eh. but we have certain areas of the country that do better in public education but for the majority of children it doesn't do well and yeah. that's the sad part is that there's a lot of kids kind of just stuck in the loop of you have to go to school because if you don't your parents go to jail so and there's was, not a lot of options for children that don't have the homeschooling option. They don't have like a private school option. Public school is the only thing that you can go to. Yep. And that's the only thing the law will allow. Yeah. So yeah. making public schools a lot better is a, is a good thing. I think it but it's so, tough. It's you, money. Well, a lot, it's a of lot of the money. Other, to, the, to the extent that it's like this side versus the other side, a lot of the other side just doesn't want to do that because they want to just put the money into private ed yeah and get their kids into private ed and parochial Uh, and it's like they actively don't want those good things to happen usually for public schools i think in the way that the budget shake out i guess i think that it's really easy to dismiss what they want because they say oh well there's other things we can spend that money on that'll be more lucrative for the children Mm -hmm. but a lot of the times the way the money's used for the school systems isn't in for the children it's not in better lunches. It's not in better school supplies. It's not yeah. in a lot of the things that the people need, better uh, laptops and stuff. It's in a new stadium for the football team. What would it's you guys in, think of a very small expense that's almost nothing to the district to have 
uh, pads and tampons for free for all students uh, in middle school and high schools all throughout. They the should. Do you think that? Yeah. Because women are going. Well, that's right. the problem. Yeah, Gordon should. Lafer made that happen. Yeah. So, so Gordon well, Lafer. That, that should have been a thing for a long time. So Why hasn't it been? You know, <laughs> that should people be. don't have menstrual cycles in in middle school and high school. They should also pass out condoms too. Like. And like talk yeah. about it. Like, Most of the times they do uh, pass out condoms, but probably not at the school. They're not promoting sex at the school. But in some are... the sex ed unit, maybe. But yeah. like Planned Parenthood's kind of got that shit online. Exactly. Too. You you go to any Planned Parenthood, bro. They got bowls and bowls of condoms. Well, we used to go there. Man, there. We used to go there yeah. to get tested with our girlfriends to find out if they were pregnant and to get them on birth control. That was a whole thing when I was growing up. We'd yeah. take our girlfriends that were like sixteen down to fucking <laughs> the thing and get uh, their parents' consent, which is basically them signing a form. Um, yeah, that was pretty nuts. But you'd walk out of there with a fistful of condoms, and, and you felt like a man. Yeah, you know? nice. put one on each finger. Yeah, you're like, you're like uh, look at how grown up I am. I got my girlfriend birth control. I'm like the Thanos, but of STDs. Well, so then, fanny stones and it fanny was, condoms. It was one of those things. We we were trying to be, I think, responsible because we were all sexually active. We weren't really using condoms, and that was on us. But. Birth control was a pretty smart option for them. You know, they use it to get their menstrual cycles, like, uh, what is it, lined up? Not lined up, fucking uh, regulated. You gotta regulate. <laughs> <laughs> he can sense when I put the camera on him and he's got the cool shades on. Yeah. He's like doing an arm dance. Because I have cool guy senses, great. And you should know this by now. <laughs> <laughs> I've reinforced your cool guyness every time I can. Wait, wait, it might wait. be going down a little with the. It's okay. It's okay. Dinosaurs they, we're, I'm going to let them have time. Valentine's happened. It was rough for the dinosaurs. They're still recovering from their crazy 48 hour sex orgy during Valentine's. That's why I can't They don't even have long enough arms to do much with those. Well, so they're like all lower body and tail. It's I, a I'm lot guessing, of ass slapping on the female Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think there's just a lot of. <laughs> ro- just a lot of rolling around, a lot of uh, ground and pound, if you know what I mean. Maybe a few, instead of a few rear naked chokes, a few rear naked pokes. Isn't things that like when that. Mario hits so, A and then A in the air? Ground and pound? <laughs> yes, ground and so pound. So you went to a, a Valentine's party the other day? I did. How, I did a lot of things this weekend. I went uh, last night. It was belated as my, my, my buddy. It was a combination party, right? Yeah. And I drew, birthday, Valentine. I drew, a, I drew a, like a, a humorous card. I got a picture of it. But I drew a humorous card of uh, the Kool-Aid man getting sucked into a black hole and a bunch of spy balloons getting sucked in there and like stars and planets. Because I was like, I need rough. So I just drew it real quick. And then... Wait, this was like a charades game? No, it was a card that I drew. I drew it a birthday card. I drew the Kool Aid Man getting ripped into a black hole. Oh, yeah, picture, yeah. But I, I draw still. I still draw sometimes. Oh, you meant you you drew a picture for them? Yeah, I, it's on the phone. But yeah, I, I drew it for them. And after that, we hung out. They had me play banjo because they're like, "You play guitar a lot," so they handed me a banjo and I tuned it for them. Okay. I got more. I didn't realize there's so many different tunings of banjo. There's like four or five. I did the long neck tuning version but it was weird did it sound good it sounded fine there was a broken string but i just played power chords and metal scales and and then there was another guy that played it was cool but yeah other than that we smoked weed and uh had some sam had some like sandwiches and i actually had some of the best cupcakes i've had in a long time and they were made with beets surprisingly and they beat were cakes. No, beat cakes no they were cupcakes. beet cupcakes they <laughs> beat your cho- cakes yeah they beat your cakes they were beets and chocolate beat those cakes beat those cakes <laughs> there you go the title of the show beat those cakes but that, they were so moist and delicious so there I was no a, idea beet cupcakes could be so good <laughs> there was a, a nutritionist lady that was on the bonfire nikki dinky and she does a lot Nikki of those. Dinky. Oh, she has an awesome that name. That is a wild awesome name. name. She's Nikki actually Dinky. really hot. She's a little like a blonde chick. She was oh, on the Wendy man. Williams show. It's awesome. But uh, Dan and Jay had him on the ep- or had her on an episode, and she made uh, brownies with black beans in them. And I thought that was so crazy, man. You know, you can make good brownies with black beans. Yeah, here it is. What the hell, dude? Nick Check Nicky's this pretty. out. Oh, this is uh, pretty good. The camera, maybe. Yeah, I drew it in like ten minutes. Nicky Dinky's the shit. Oh, morbid. 
Yes. <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like, did the like, Kool-Aid uh, man blow a, a hole through his head? I, I, one time when I was uh, in a drawing class at community college, we had to draw out and do little ceramic tiles, and they put, put them all around this fountain. And it was about saving the earth, and everyone yes. had like... Saving the earth. Damn. I like that. But it, <laughs> everyone else had like hearts in the planet, and everyone holding hands. I drew a bunch of like punk rock llamas on fire, like tearing up through a neighborhood. Dude, and Nikki Dinky's hot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Damn it, Trevor. She beats More your goodness. story. Yeah, I'm she sorry. Does. Yeah, she does. <laughs> sorry, yeah. You got out Nikki Dinky. Nikki Dinky. <laughs> she got Nikki I have morbid Dinky. humor. There you go. <laughs> Nikki Dinky. Man, yeah. she's fine. All right. Um, all right. Can we do the real quick the plug thing? Is it the news? No, we did the news. Yeah, we did the news. We're on it, baby. You didn't do yeah. your plug, Trevor. Yeah. You got a plug. So there, I'll make it super quick. So a poet I know named Jeffrey Morrell, like the mushroom Morrell. Jeffrey Dahmer Morrell. But he, he uh, he's a good poet, and he does the open mic with me at First Center Trap House. And he wanted me to give him a shout-out. And he gave our show a shout-out on his blog. But he has oh, a blog yeah. about forging for plants and nature and poetry. And it's called forgingformore.substack.com. Okay. And it's just like really thoughtful, nice poetry about everything. And he just he did one like a good one Valentine's Day where he talks about how if you like everyone when you're an artist, same with music too, like you're always being pushed to like, hey, play a love song, play a love song. But a lot of times you talk about how poetry, he loves poetry so much that to him it's like a love to poetry. So every song is like when I play guitar, even if I'm fucking around, like I love the guitar enough, like, it's me expressing myself through a guitar, so why do I need to specifically make just love-themed songs? Okay. So. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, Jeffrey Morrell, check him out. I want to call poetry really gay. Forging for more at substack.com. I don't no, think it is, man. Poetry's really awesome. Poetry usually <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, like, get me, but... His poetry is really I've good. I've heard poems that I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes it just hits you in the soul, man. Yeah, You're so like, I'll, what's I'll going about, on here? I'll, I'll, in the description, I'll talk awesome about it. kind of gay. It's, it's right? a little bit of both, right? man. Just gay Fred enough to be awesome. You know? <laughs> no, it was good. No, I, I used to... I didn't write a lot of poetry in school, but they made you write poetry in school. You know what I mean? And uh, there were some people in my class that they would write poems, mostly girls, but they would write some poems that I was like, whoa. I usually was drawing morbid pictures and getting in trouble. That's what I usually did. You never had to write poems for class? I did. I just, uh, I, I did some. I usually end up just drawing more, like writing stories, but I always po- poems are cool. I, I like, always I like assimilated. Trying to do haikus, haikus are pretty well, cool. I always assimilated yeah. poetry with rap. So I was yeah. really into rap when I was younger. So I was like, poetry is just a different version, man. You might as well rhyme as, some shit. I wasn't as much at that time when I got older. But at the time, I was you know, more just rock. But as I got older, I appreciated a lot more. What about you, Gradient? What about poetry? Uh, crazy enough, I've been having a fucking two-thirds finished poetry book for three years. Okay. I just haven't finished it. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to finish it, it, maybe? Yeah, I'm excited yeah. about it. Poetry's pretty dope. I don't know man. how I'm going to put it out, because I imagined it going on Instagram in you like wanna, nine panels of posts. You, we could give a shout-out for it on the show, maybe. Yeah, when it's ready. That'd be awesome. We'll give you a shout-out, maybe. Litty, titty. Maybe Maybe you could read one of your poems on the show. That would be pretty That'd dope. Be cool that oh yeah, dude. I got one with. about Chingy. Yeah, Chingy the rapper. Oh, yeah. Chingy. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've heard of him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Could... Chingy was a funny guy, man. He was in that early two thousands group with like Soldier Boy and fucking. Oh. There's a bunch of them. Chingy been around a little bit though. Okay. Yeah, he got like. Didn't he get caught up in a murder rap or something? He killed the dude and went to prison. Damn. Don't know. You want to hear the first one? I have three poems about Chingy. Okay. Pretty quick. All, All right. 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 All right. Breaking poetry. Here we All go. Right. As a kid, I kind of thought about Chingy. What it must be like to be Chingy. Could we one day all become Chingy? Universal appeals about Chingy. Little kiddo believed about Chingy that it was far from hard to be Chingy. When you listen to works by Chingy, it doesn't strike you as hard to be Chingy. State of mind accessed. Pure Chingy. Just remember that you'll never be Nelly. <laughs> Damn! I liked the I like ending. That. that was really good. <laughs> it's just Nelly will never a, be Nelly. Nelly was less of a flash into the pan. He had Nelly had a weird uh, 
Yep. He came up and he had some big songs in the beginning. He was with who the fuck was Paul he? Paul Wall was with him on some stuff. He did the grills. No, he was before Paul Wall. But but the song grills, Paul Wall's in it. Yeah, grills yeah. hot in here. Yes. But Nelly Crazy. was with the Rough. No, not the Rough Riders. He was oh, with no. the fucking. <laughs> oh damn it! Who was Nelly so, with? What DMX just shows up? That'd no, he was with fucking. Now I'm getting on myself about rap knowledge. <laughs> Mystical and fucking, he was with a bunch of like Memphis rappers and and Nashville rappers that came up around the same time and shit. Yeah. Okay. And he got in into it really big because he was slightly country. Right. And he uh. did a bunch of music videos with like a bunch of strippers. That was Nelly's thing for a while. He had like some of the dirtiest strip videos. Have you heard the song "Accidental Racist"? Nelly no. and Brad Paisley. It's yes. a collab. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. He did a bunch There's of some country really cringy stuff. stuff where he's like, uh, if you forget the gold chains, I'll forget the whips and chains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, weird have, uh, I have actually seen it. It is pretty funny. There are so many funny country racist videos. It's like, what was the other one? Oh, God. There is the MAGA. Well, there's anything by Johnny Rev that's pretty cringy right there. No, there is this dude just recently who had like a real intense song. Tom with McDonald? This, yeah, with I, the MAGA guy and the black dude. And it was just yes. like, I don't know what is going because on these the days. Why is this music? No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's Joyner Lucas who's similar, but Tom McDonald also. Can you bring it up, Gradient? But if, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Joy, racist or what? what? I Sorry. think Joyner Lucas is what Chris is talking about. I think it's the... Tom oh, Donald I'm not racist? White trash. Yeah. yeah, that's the yeah. song. Oh, yeah. Joyner Lucas. Yeah, no, and Eminem believed that he should win a uh, Grammy for it. Eminem believed that Joyner Lucas should win it. But Tom McDonald is not saying Yeah, this thing. one. Yeah, yes. With all due respect, I don't have pity for you black niggas. That's the way I feel. <laughs> Screaming black lives matter or the black guys rather be dead beats to pay your bills. Yell a nigga this, a nigga that. Call everybody nigga and get a nigga mad. As soon as I say nigga, then everyone react. Want to swing at me and call me racist because I ain't black. And pound that then. Talking about slavery like you was around back then. Like you was I like how they didn't want to get a real MAGA hat. So they just like stitched one way. Yeah. Like right. What I don't get is like... See a when did when did uh, music be, get this man political, son, man? It's so no, political. Just, done, I mean, you still trapped in a rut. I work my ass I mean, off to pay my taxes for what? So you can keep there is a trend to it for sure. Definitely. For yeah. children, I think during the four years that like Donald Trump was in. Yeah, I think in the four years that Donald Trump was president, bro, like the politics in the country got so nuts. Like you proud to be fake. It's really wild. You rather sell drugs and get a job and be straight, and then you turn around and complain about the poverty rate. Fuck out my, my friend face. Sam watched this and he didn't know that Joiner Lucas is not the guy actually rapping this. Change, yeah, so he was dollar. super. Got nobody else to blame, so you blame Donald. If fuck the world would make America great, condom. My boy's been back. I'm not racist. My sister's boyfriend's black. I'm not racist. My sister-in-law's baby cousin Tracy got a brother and his girlfriend's black. Or <laughs> <laughs> there's not enough jobs for all the men in your house. Maybe we should build a wall to keep the Mexicans out. Or maybe we I feel like it gets a little better when the other guy starts racist. doing it. It's it's yeah. both of them, but like he's still just sitting here taking it. Oh, maybe. no, he's doing it now. Yeah. We shouldn't say it, but we do, and that's just what it is. But that don't mean that you can say it just because you got nigga friends. Nigga. <laughs> That word was originated for you to keep asunder. That when we use it, we know that's just how we greet each other. And when you use it, we know there's a double meaning under. And even if I wasn't picking cotton physically, that don't mean I'm not infected by the history. My grandmama was a slave. You're getting mad history. educational. You ain't got no motherfucking sympathy, you pussy nigga. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can never fail my life. I'm trying to have faith, but I never feel all right. It's hard to elevate when this country's ran by whites, judging me by my skin color and my blackness. Trying to find a job and ain't nobody call me So they might have some copyright <laughs> issues with this, hopefully that. Oh, uh, well, uh, as long as you're commenting on it. Yeah, okay. as long as we're but, talking but, about it. We don't need to fucking spend the whole seven okay. minutes. No, but, but it's it's a crazy video. It is. And, and yeah. I like it. And though. also it's... White Trash by Tom McDonald's, another similar very... White Boy? Have you seen that White one? Trash. White trash. Oh, okay. Tom McDonald was Tom somebody McDonald. I could not get into his yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm offended. Like, I can't get into it, but I definitely knew guys that were all about him. Oh, I've actually been on the phone with this guy, Mad Child. I didn't yeah, know that. Yes. I'd kind of rather watch White Boy. 
Mad Chai, yeah, he, Mad Chai's a rapper. Yeah, that's a cool if a white boy. That's a great thing. Isn't he gets the dude, up on the table and starts screaming, White boy! I cannot why? feel guilty. This is the dude with the do, tattooed eyes. I, the why you think I don't know. I oh my god. White, but I never put your neck in no news. There's another guy that looks like him that's got tattooed eyes. You can't just label me racist because yes, I'm related I don't to think people him, who did some terrible way back before I was alive. My parents brought me up to treat everyone as an equal. I refuse to feel ashamed because of my pretty blue eyes. And not <laughs> white supremacist. Anyone who labels me as that because of my family genetics. The hatred for Caucasians is so pathetic. Go be proud that you're black, but don't hate me for some credit. I'm not the white devil. I think when YouTube. The white race as a whole ain't the enemy. There's racist white people, but we're far from that collectively. White boy. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's so persecuted. <laughs> this is pretty funny. I like the close up though. Yeah. I mean the the like very close. I've never seen this one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> It's like not even worth engaging. Oh, it's so man. stupid. It's so it. funny though. It's, it's silly. <laughs> it's just silly to me. Oh man. Uh, well, he is Canadian. White people so. going. Is he? Yes. That explains, he so, explains much. so much. Yes. White hey, people. I'm not sorry about that. I'm, I'm a white boy. All right. <laughs> white all right. boy summer, bud. <laughs> yeah. There's Chet your, Hanks. There's your white boy summer. And then there's your hoosker don'ts right there. I didn't put you in a noose, eh? Hey there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I had the moose, but you know there are no slaves. I'm too busy fucking moose up here and playing hockey. So I don't know. That's silly. Poutine, Canadian. bitch. Poutine. I can't Poutine's get it right. really good. So it's I guess local <laughs> news. Moving on. Let's have us move on to national news. Yeah. Yeah, Why does so ones. much has happened that? Uh, let's see. <laughs> I mean, where do you want to begin? So, I don't so know. Man. These moments are just really funny to me. <laughs> well, it's been a week and a half, folks. We've taken a week and a half off. Life happened, so a lot of things have happened. Uh, like more details on the the train derailment in Ohio. Uh, since since our last episode, more things have been going through the sky. I've been freaking people out, and now. There's an issue where certain military and the government, they don't seem to realize that there's, like, the weather agency sending up, like, 900 weather balloons twice a day and that there's a lot of commercial balloons and there's a lot of balloons that just, you know, a month ago no one took notice. But after it got attention, definitely the media is trying to distract us from other shit. It's like, hey, look at all these balloons that have always been here, but all of a sudden it's a problem now. Yeah, fear-based stories. Yeah, so now since it's gone, they've been talking about how, you know, there's been a lot of, oh shit, by the government realizing how many balloons that's actually going on. And they talked about how a lot of, like, high-altitude balloon manufacture- manufacturers. <laughs> that goddamn Michelin man. Yeah, they're trying, they're trying to, they're now, they're now trying to deal with a lot more than usual scrutiny just for doing what they've been doing, so. Yeah. I don't know, man. There's a lot of weird shit going on. Fucking, they're shooting everything out of the sky they can. They're fucking North Korea's testing missiles right now again. Testing, yeah. North Korea is just fucking scary because they do have nuclear capabilities, and their leader right now is just an unstable dude. He's been unstable for a while. And you imagine just living in a fucking country. Biden Biden won't call him Little Rocket Man. No. That's what we (laughs) did. That was our foreign policy. (laughs) And it's funny is Trump called him that and also met him versus a lot of people didn't say remarks like that and they didn't meet him. So he talked mad shit and he met him and actually shook his hand, which is pretty wild. There's that great meme of him like sitting there at the table and he's like, we're all going to look nice and thin. (laughs) And he just looks at Kim Jong and he's like, Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I saw a few clips of it, and just Donald Trump just making weird faces the entire time, just going, meh, meh, "Look at me, look at me!" Like this fucking guy. Yeah, no, there's been like multiple shootings in America. Still, uh, we're getting, dude. We got to keep a counter, man. We got to keep like a fucking sc- like shooting counter or something. A yearly we're run out of page space. Well, there's been more shootings in America this year than there's days. So we've had more mass shootings <laughs> than days. And we're only 
Getting two months, the end, baby. We're getting through two the months. end of February. Yeah. So yeah, we're already like. But past has 60. there been a day where there wasn't one? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, nah, there then we're doing okay. Yeah. Well, that we know of because a mass shooting by definition is four or more casualties. So I'm sure yeah. somewhere in America there's something going on. Why well, you gotta poo poo us? Well, I, love I already poo pooed earlier, country. right before the show. The best country. America. We I get guess. a lot of we get a lot of gunplay talk, man, but we don't live in South America either. Well, gunplay is also a rapper from South Florida too. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we don't live in Venezuela or Ecuador or Mexico. Yeah, we're, we're not like Lebanon, Palestine with Israel. There are other countries with bigger gun problems, but bigger. we get a lot of attention for our gun problems just because of the way that people get shot too. People get shot in grocery stores and fucking malls and just any weird random, place, random any places. weird place, yeah, church. But for a lot of people, I think that that's been the life that's been their regular day to day for a long time. It just hasn't hit. America is hard yet. I don't know. It's happening, though. And it's weird because a lot of people are so distracted on their phones. Like, if you're either on the bus or you're seeing people in their cars or even walking, it makes you wonder, like, there'd be a lot of cases where someone could just, like, hide behind a tree, be set up, and a lot of people might not realize right, right away because so many people are looking down at their phones. Dude. Whereas I'm looking around because shit can happen. Dude, like, there's I have a, a habit of looking around all the time. There's a guy at my job, bro, and I work at a place where there's a lot of temp workers and a lot of people that just kind of come and go. A lot of shady guys. A lot of guys just on the road working and yeah. shit fucking need a job, and they pop in, they work for a bit, and they pop out. Yep. But um, there's a couple of guys that I keep my eye on at work because I'm like, if anybody's probably going to shoot the fucking place up, it'll probably be these individuals, you know? It happens. We we had a, when I worked at Lands, which is similar, big cabinet, wood shop, we had a guy once that was getting, that was, he was friends with everyone, but he was, a, he was a 19-year-old kid that came from South Dakota, drove here, try life in Oregon. He was doing all right. And then after two months, one day he, he was building cabinets and people were just picking on him. And he just snapped one day, and I was running a machine like probably a hundred feet away on the assembly line, and he just started banging a this hammer just against all the machines on the conveyor belt, and just started screaming at the top of his lungs, "I'm gonna shoot all you motherfuckers!" Yeah. And then he immediately got a sco- he got taken out of there by yeah. two guys, and that was the last of that guy. We never saw him again. But it was, it, but I guess he texted a whole bunch of his coworkers. He didn't have my number, fortunately, but a bunch of people that he was friends with. He just did a mass text like, "I'm going to come in and shoot all of you guys and yeah. like, harass people." So they ended up just having a, you know, if you see this guy, contact the police. And what's funny is an hour before he freaked out, he came up to me at the uh, during lunch. I usually play guitar at the one of the, the benches. He came up to me. He's like, "You're a cool guy. We should do music together sometime." And we were talking about potentially doing music for an hour before he snapped and threatened to shoot. Don't go getting shot, bro. I know. I think there's a lot of people like that out there, and that's why you got to be careful sometimes, man. There's a lot of weird people that, like, they live amongst us, you know, and they have problems. Trevor failed to get him to stop from snapping. If Trevor's musical potential was a little more inspiring, I'm sorry, Gradient. (laughs) Well, he wasn't the one picking on him. No, I wasn't. I was always nice to him. I was 100 feet away. Trevor knows the rules. Be nice to the quiet guy. <laughs> I've been the quiet guy, the, the the quiet guy of a boiling temper, but I'm much calmer now. But, yeah, when I when I see guys that little off, I always make a point like, hey, how are you doing today? Yeah. Because then if they do snap, they're less likely to shoot you versus the asshole that picks on them every day. I hate to say it, but there's a Dane Cook bit that I'm reminded of. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obby. Is the yes. Yeah. 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 And it's like you give him candy <laughs> early, and so that sometimes he'll just one day come up with a sawed up yeah. shotgun, obliterate everyone, open your yeah. door and go, hey, thanks, thanks for, for the candy. candy. <laughs> <laughs> it is I have awesome. not seen that sketch. I should. We all know these people. They're more or less shapes, you know, not really <laughs> body types, but more like ovals and He's triangles. Not fat, but he know. is shapes. Shapes. <laughs> yeah. There are definitely people I've seen that are just shapes that you don't really use words for. Like that guy's kind of like a tetrahedron over here. Like that's a dodecahedron looking motherfucker over here. Yeah, shapes. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, we're gonna move on Monday. to world news. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah. we're doing good time. All right, so world news. Who wants to go? I did the last one, so. Yes, I don't know. What's you got something? In the world. 
Um, North Korea's testing missiles. <laughs> we just <laughs> talked about that, man. I don't know. We did we did world news, didn't we? Didn't we do we national well, and we, world? We briefly did it. All yeah. Right. Russia's but, fucking fighting Ukraine still. still it's about and, to be a year anniversary, actually. The the twenty fourth, so next week will be a year anniversary. So wow. here's the real one. If you could settle the war tomorrow with a bare knuckle fist fight between Zelensky and Putin, who's your money on? I'm talking because because Zelensky's obviously a younger man, but I think he's smaller. He's smaller and 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 Putin, Putin's Putin? ex KGB. Yes, this like, is other dude's like an actor or yeah, something. He's, he's an, an actor, actor or no, a dancer. Putin, Putin actually murdered people while he was a KGB agent. Like he's murdered people and done active shit. He he probably knows the rat fighting system. He probably's one of those guys like <laughs> tactical like, fights. Oh, the full guys with motorcycle helmets. He probably has a backup plan. He's probably putting cue balls and socks and fucking hitting motherfuckers with them. And who's your know, money on? Probably Putin. It depends. If he if he rides in on a horse with a shirt on, maybe Zelensky. If he rides in on a horse with no shirt on, Putin. He's fucking. He's feeling it. He's got that big dick energy. Probably Putin. I think Putin would get his fucking clock cleaned. I hope Zelensky would clean his clock. Well, that would be the I best. Would that so. would be the best thing. Is he rolls in there thinking he's like badass as fuck? He's just like I have and Zelensky's just got the rage of like all these people dying in his country yeah. and fucking people. You know, yeah. dude, and he just lays into them. If if Putin is 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 yeah, if if Zelensky's going on rage, and I'd go Zelensky. Definitely. Because Putin doesn't have anything to be mad about except yeah. for that he's got a black eye. Yeah. yeah. No, Zelensky has all that rage. So you're not. I reconsider. I, I, I think Zelensky's Zelensky. got more of a fighting chance. How about, how about chance. you, Gray? Zelensky or Putin? Bare knuckle match. Um, <laughs> I don't Russia. really know because I don't like either of them. Yeah. But <laughs> I'd say Zelensky's the less of the two evils. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, far I, less. I'd say far less. I, I think There's it's a lot crazy of good world that, news I found though. Well, I think it's nuts that we're very pro Ukraine right now, even though they've been pro Russia for a long, long time. And we have a lot of Russians that live in America as well as Ukrainians, so. It's it's We're a, a country with so many different ethnic groups that it's kind of crazy. It's, it's like, hard to be on the side of anybody, but it's obvious that one side is doing wrong to the other. You know, one fucking country invaded the other, pretty much, yeah. as a special tactical operation. Yes. They've to, been there for over a fucking year, out, murdering. To clean out these uh, Nazi elements that are trying to keep the Ukrainian people from reuniting with their Russian brothers who culturally are apparently the same all of a sudden. Well, did you see the... Whatever is bad for weapons manufacturers is usually what I support. Yeah. And right now, I okay. get the arming them and whatever, but it just, it's just a little convenient that they've got so much coming in. Well, it's really cool that we've that just fucking big, big allocated, point. what is it, $800 billion to fund yeah. them or something? Yeah, we keep... Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's over... A, that's almost a trillion dollars... <laughs> we could use on anything else, but you know. Yeah, and China might give a uh, uh, aid to, to Russia. To Russia. And that's great. Or are they going to give aid to Russia? Or are they going to give AIDS to Russia? Know. Here's a British story. Uh, a lot of teachers are just finding out that all their students love Andrew Tate, <laughs> or a Who's lot of Andrew the young Tate? men. Andrew Why? Tate. I didn't know Andrew I Tate know, was a I British. Know. Guy. Is he British? Yeah, and so okay. I mean, there's a lot of young young guys in Britain that apparently that like stu- school age kids that really like him, and so teachers he's are all trying to cool. like, fight back now. They're like, oh, he's brainwashing a generation. He's, so he's who like is Andrew slight, Tate? He's like a slightly British version of the, 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 who, the Paul brothers. Like he's he's a, he's a big YouTube guy that he's talks in custody like a right now in, some form, in Romania. Isn't he the guy that got caught for a pizza box? Yeah, 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 yeah that's he the was, guy. But Paul, he was trying to talk shit to Greta Thunberg. Fucking, yeah, he's but he, he's, he's, not he's done some box. celebrity boxing. He's talked about boxing like the the Jake and Logan Paul brothers, and he's he's one of those celebrity guys that likes to talk. You know, likes to just talk about like, oh, just be a man, da da da. And but he's, yeah. I don't know. He's, he's just a douchebag. He's, yeah. he's just a douchebag. Like I know well, it's very appealing to a fucking twelve year old boy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, you've been. You, you're not allowed to be the full masculine self that you want to. I mean, there's, you know, I, it's it's. I, I I do get the I do get the appeal because culturally, there is you know like hey you're being a toxic male whereas Andrew Tate's like fuck it be as toxic as you want. So I mean, well, society doesn't reward masculinity not anymore. Not anymore. Which, no. which well, it does in certain facets like football. You know, like like major yeah. sporting events. But do I do I get a high five for coming home from fixing saw blades that help build everything that makes yeah, society happen? Yeah, you well, do. From you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but from society, or do you get or for you for doing dishes? Not really. No. 
I mean, well, I think that things. it's easier to control men if they're not as aggressive. You know, testosterone True. makes men aggressive. If you take a man's testosterone away, he's yeah. not as aggressive. But it's easier to control people with like things like income and food and, and family. Like it's easier to control people with things they want. Yeah. Versus that's what, that's what we've been doing. That's why we have laws set up the way they are, so they can control and keep a, a caste system, even though they claim they're not trying to do that. It's a can reverse pyramid the, scheme. <laughs> can we change the show to two lonely? Epic macho strong guy. No, man, no. in a canoe There's, podcast. That's too many words, bud. Too many what would words. be the acronym? <laughs> Can we just 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 stick with boys? We're just regular guys. Epic macho strong men. No, we're... I will re- reinforce the need for your masculinity anytime you want, fellas. Well, I think Thank that you. we got to be we'll somewhat masculine. And we'll do the same masculine. for you, Gradient. <laughs> Gradient, if you want to just go punch a fucking elk in the face <laughs> as you pound a, a, a Budweiser and have a bald eagle like fly around, and then you suddenly have an urge to like play some sweet cello about your brother that died in the war, <laughs> not making airwolf reference at all, but I am, then you know, do that. I wouldn't mind shooting an elk sometime with a bow. Because <laughs> I've been s- wanting to start hunting it eventually. Well, so, I'm target shooting. Here's a, here's a, I would like to do some bow hunting. I've done it with deer, but I'd, elk would be fun. Maybe here's a, here's a philosophical question, I guess. What maybe someday you and I grinding, we'll see. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. <laughs> what, Chris too, uh, if you want to jump in. What is a man to you? There's a philosophical question. What is a man? We just saw the thing that's remember when Sam Elliott was asked that? Sam Elliott, the actor, was asked about it, and he just his response is similar to my mine of just men that do what they have to do and they don't make a huge scene about it and they're just very consistent like like my grandpa, for example, would probably for me be like a big example because he was, he was you know this country boy that had grown up the depression. He had fought in the Pacific Theater in World War Two, and then he was just, he was just generally a nice guy to anybody. And he he was the sort of guy that if your car was broken down, he would help you out and he would tell you a joke as he was fixing the tire. And then he would take you back to the illegal barber shop, cut your hair, and then help you like fix your car. And then he would give you a beer. Like that's the sort of guy he was. He was just. Just a super nice, badass dude, but whatever needed to be done, whether it was fixing or shooting, so whatever it was, like, I learned how to, like, use a gun, use a chainsaw. Like, literally, he taught me how to tie my shoes and ride a bike. Like, drive stick. Like, that. He, it was him. So, I don't know. I, or even, like, using a boat. I remember going on a boat trip with him. So, I, I just say, like, being able to do what needs to be done and... Being able to like make light out of situations where you know when when the women in the family were screaming running around he was like hey let's have a joke and we'll let them cool down and work on something and then we'll go to dinner and it'll be okay and usually it worked out so okay how's that for what about you gradient what do you think a man is oh i don't fucking know dude this shit's gonna make me unelectable in 20 years in eugene I no guess ever gonna... you could give a very biologically <laughs> correct <laughs> answer. You just say it's someone with male genitalia. I mean, genitalia, the words like you, you pick are, are who you are, man. Well, so. yeah, I'm a man. I'm a I'm a I'm a weird one. I'm, I'm a, a man. One. I'm a man. I'm a man. I think when you're talking about joking and stuff, you know, I have some reverence for for the older folks in my life who've been able to teach me how to joke. And I think that men probably like the stereotype is women aren't as funny. And I feel like you might believe that, Chris. <laughs> I don't know why I think that. Kim Congdon's pretty funny. Have okay. you ever seen her? Do you I, a lot up? of great women comedies. And there are great, some good great, ones. Great. There, I am a, I'm a very similar boat with Chris. We're two lonely boys in the canoe, mm. metaphorically. But there are funny women out there. I've, mm-hmm. I've seen... I've seen. He showed me Kim Condon. Uh, there's... The 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 conk lady Nikki you Glazer's showed me. Funny. Yeah, Nikki Glazer's funny. The uh yeah. the, the the conk Wilhelmina lady you Kunk. showed me. Yeah. She's Morgan really funny. Her, yeah. There's there's also been just like some some ladies that have been on the Legion of Skanks that Chris has shown me that are pretty funny. Yeah. And but maybe it's just how I how we were conditioned. But like when like we're somewhere and a woman and like some women try to make really aggressive jokes, it kind of throws us off. Oh, yeah. And when they're like, yeah, you men with your penises sometimes yeah. when they come at you really rough, yeah. you just kind of look at them because, like, if Chris or I were to just get in a woman's face and start screaming about her being a stupid, dumb bitch, da, 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 yeah. it wouldn't be okay, which mm. it's not. But right. I don't know. There is a bit of a double standard, I feel, and also just for different 
you know, men and women are different in some ways. Just mm. I think we have different senses of humor sometimes. So. Well, I think part of it is also that men probably are like just trained to be funny a little more because you have to like reduce people's fear around you by having the potential of violence. I would right? try so to li- try to lighten yeah. the mood a little more. I'm sure we've all had. It's to also do that. more of a way, more of a flirting tactic for men. Sure. To try to charm a woman by being funny, like yeah. you know, a, a decent looking guy who's really funny is known to maybe be able to right. to hook up with a, a beautiful woman. Get to know. procreate, man. Maybe just a, I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know anything. I all think right. I think that like in today's society, men don't quite know what being a man is anymore. Like it's they've not, kind of it's lost not as, themselves. It, mm. It's not as like a straightforward picture. Like no, it is, and that's the problem is that the people around you try to make you feel like being aggressive or being judgmental or being decisive is a bad thing. Well, sometimes that's the thing that kept people alive for a long time. Definitely. So having a harsh judgment and having hard critiques and stuff like that, I think that's a part of being a man, but you also have to know like the power of your touch. You can't be too rough with people or else you just push everybody away. You know, and that's where I think good men, they, they can do both. You can be very aggressive, but you can also, like, hold a butterfly. You know, yeah. be able to do a lot of different things. Um, you got to be a well-rounded person in this world. And you can't be always fucking susceptible to everybody else's thoughts. Unfortunately, everybody's going to have their own opinions. You have to tell the world to fuck you sometimes and do what you feel is right. I think that's the number part one... of being a man. Yeah. I, I read that the number one female fantasy is, like... A, a, a man who can cause craziness and chaos and get get nuts, but that the woman is able to tame that. Yeah, the uh, wild stallion or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've yeah. definitely heard jokes about women saying like, "Oh, you need to get tamed by a good woman." I've been told that too. Yeah. Well, how do you think women have learned to live in society as long as they have? Right. So they've learned how to manipulate men. Yes. Because if you have something that is bigger, stronger, and more aggressive, you have to learn to use your your charm. Yeah. And that's what women do. They charm men. But it's a it's a fine balance because women and men do it to each other. You know what I mean? It works both ways. There's things that women want that men have and there's things that men want that women have. Yeah. And if you can respect somebody enough, you know, maybe you can get some things out of each other. Maybe you just want to be a necrophiliac or you want to be a dendrophile or do some other random thing. I don't know. I guess. I guess. I'm just throwing that in there. All right. You guys want to move on to uh, the rollerblade team? Yeah, sure. let's get yeah, in let's Team go. Rollerblade. I've actually been wanting to talk about that. Yeah, dude, it's going to be lit. So I checked out a, it was like a quick documentary, and it had a lot of interesting things about rollerblading in it. It's kind of about how skateboarding came up to its prowess and how rollerblading was like the new kid on the block. Mm. Um, but there was a thing in the 90s called Team Rollerblade, that uh, Team Skate. And they were basically a bunch of dudes from California. I think there was one girl on the team. And they were all promotional people for Team Rollerblade. Yes. So let's check out one of the people. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Shades on, just like them. Yeah, Bruce Action Jackson. You know when you gotta blow off some steam? Just go and invert it like, damn! Getting those huge airs and just having a having a blast, you know what I mean? Having a having a blast, yeah. Oh man, and they were trying to make I like this guy. Well, they were trying to make lot. rollerblading look more like street, you know? Because skateboarding was taking over, so skateboard rollerblading was like, oh shit, we got to do something. Well, I think but, rollerblading was thought of as like an X. Ex- this is what rollerblading was thought of. Yes. Yeah. Ladies doing definitely. I Only three wheels. Like Jill Schultz. Safe. I've met so many people. I wonder what kind of dancer I've been she California is. For three years, never Maybe an exotic dance. dancer. Only time dance classes and <laughs> in town in the rinks and now it's like I have to get to the beach every day because it's <laughs> become a regular part of my life getting out and skating and stuff. <laughs> skating and stuff, yeah. Oh man, how many people had to hurt themselves on rollerblades? Not enough, apparently, because skateboarding won that cultural war. Oh, man, it's so rough. But, yeah, it's just like a... It's a skate video. This is Los Angeles. It's California, around yeah. Venice and stuff. Yeah. And they're doing a lot of, like, street skating. Should I keep rolling with it? or? Uh, let's go to more? the new Action Jackson. So this Sweet. is him a few years later. Uh, he's still pushing rollerblades. I don't know what he's up to these days. This is like a dude I want to follow up on. 
I what? love that camera effect. That was great. Oh, man. <laughs> it's awesome. Spinning in. We're going to talk about rollerblading uh, this morning. Usually you associate it with uh, the old the news. Along the South like from 2000. Yeah, not usually the inner city, unless, of course, no, you this are is the AJ 90s, Jackson, bro. our straight from the streets team. Yeah, look, look at that hair. They caught up with Jackson at a skating demonstration. Take a look. That's him. I love the kid dancing. <laughs> hey. hey! They rolled the same clip. Bro. Grind. This program called Rolling Deep in That's the Hood. Him. Rolling know, Deep in the Hood. Later. AJ Jackson. Places, man. Let the kids try it on for free. You know, I bring my van out, my skates, and my whole energy, man, and that positive attitude, you know, and that's what I do by giving back to the kids, man. I believe it's going to help the kids in the future because they need things to do, you know, some after school activities, you know what I'm saying? And uh, putting on a pair of skates, man, is just something you could do on a solo tip, you know? And if you get a bunch of kids together, then you can start playing some roller hockey, going out on little fun skates and stuff like that. Strapping them down, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Strapping them down! Strap them down. Man, man, to take care of the body. Strapping down that helmet, man, to protect your brain, you know, the tool, the ultimate tool. The ultimate, ultimate tool! tool. <laughs> I love his enthusiasm, though. We Can need people like that. As to why you're here today, Carl? Uh, we're just here to uh, help the kids out. Here's the money, uh, Fox News. Uh, Here's the money behind it. Here. This dude uh, from uh, local skate rink 404. Pads, supplying the helmets, and just helping them out and uh, giving them a little tips and stuff like that. Pretty soon, the whole neighborhood's going to be on skates. Whipping it up, man. Shut it, man, because that's what time it is. He is a really good. As long as we stop having gang shootings and shootouts and stuff. Fuck. It'd be great if everyone could. He's could keeping join it real though. Like and we will have like less killings and <laughs> stuff. Damn, I'm man. Here looking at the skater. Look at them grasses up. Yeah. I, can yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see how she got a baby. Yeah, I can see how she got a baby. Oh, 100%. Hey, Jackson. Just gonna put my helmet on for the youth, man. Everybody needs an agent. He's about to jump this car, man. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps it real. Can he do that? Yes. Like long distance? He's got this, man. He's booking. Slow mo. Oh, yeah. oh, he, he did it. He tucked him. Oh. He's yeah. a badass, dude. I'm telling you, man. You know, the fact he jumped that car is pretty legit. That is some mad. <laughs> that is some mad hops. If I try that, it'd be it's terrible. Amazing, man. Yeah, but yeah, that but, whole video was captivating. Hell yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a pretty cool. Uh, I didn't see the end before. Well, I thought that it was, was a pretty cool thing because like rollerblading really fell out of style in the two thousands. I remember you know? that. And skateboarding definitely took over, oh, but 100%. like. You just don't see people rollerblading at all anymore, it's skateboards man. Skateboards or, or bikes, but also now you see people doing like the hoverboards, like the more modern versions. But yeah, skateboarding and bicycles. Have you seen the one wheels that everybody yes, rides around those on? Those are weird. Oh, those, are those are cool. You seen those, Gradient? Hell yeah, dude. What are they called? The the it hoverboards. Or, no. One wheel is the name for the one that has the central wheel. Yeah. yeah. One wheels. Yeah. It's like a board, and it has fucking sensors on the feet. I love those, man. That's pretty cool. So I want to do it. Yeah. yeah. I want to try it out and see what it'd be like. Look and fire. there's a guy on Garfield sometimes. There's a guy just an old school unicycle I've seen a few times. And that's always wild when you just see a guy on a unicycle on a busy street. You're like, what is happening right now? <laughs> there's always a couple of people on stilts. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen a guy on stilts downtown. Down by the Whitaker Block Party. I've yeah. been down there a couple times. There was one dude who was on uh, an extension unicycle, and he was he was like four or five feet in the air, man. That's wild. And I was just like, dude, one Beauty. fall from down there or from up there, and you're done, bad, man. A bad night. And he's like, he's like, I fell before. It's okay. <laughs> it was so cool. I respect that. It's cool. Hell yeah. What? Right, since we uh. I'm gonna keeping it real. Do you want to talk about some drug free zones in Portland, Oregon? Sure. And the the different class schedules of drugs. Yeah, uh, I was watching an episode of Cops. To, uh, it was a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. but there was an arrest in Portland where a guy was arrested in a drug free zone, 
And it was the first I'd ever heard of a drug-free zone in Portland because, you know, it's Portland. There's a lot of drugs in Portland. Oh, yeah. But apparently there's a few areas in the downtown and uh, some of the historical areas in the town that is considered a drug-free zone. And if you're arrested in these zones, you cannot be in them or purchasing any drugs or any drug-related offenses again. Or you get thrown back in jail. Um, the crazy part is, is the way that you register for the drug uh, free zones is in the police station, which is in a drug free zone. So it's like technically you can't be in there yet. I don't know. It's it's a real catch twenty two type thing, and I think it's um, laws set up to keep people cycling through the the system. I see. You know, um, but when I when I went and looked the other day at the scheduled drugs, you know, kind of the things that get people arrested um it was still pretty nuts to me that some of the drugs are categorized the way that they are do you want um, to start from one or five yeah let's start from one this is crazy Trevor. so yeah. the most potential for abuse and the dependence with no medical qualities what? heroin no medicine yeah, that's- yeah i love how peyote and marijuana is on there and they both have been used by people for for spiritual and for medical healing for thousands of years yeah it's very interesting That's fucking wild uh lsd ecstasy marijuana peyote and heroin are all schedule one drugs That's fucking wild you know uh cannabis is the one that still blows my mind that it's a schedule one you know yeah. um it could have been rescheduled a long time ago it could have but you know, the people up top, the prison system is making more money with it staying course, right there, so that's why it's going to stay and, there. And, and I think it was one of Biden's biggest possible re-election cards in the sleeve. If he, if you he, know. if he, but helped. he's never had a pro marijuana stance, so that's. But his if whole he issue. did it, I could see what he's he saying. He just passed something not too long ago where he decriminalized all like small possessions and and previous uh, convictions Cases. about which it, which is cool, which is, which a, is step. a step in the right direction. Yeah. But again, it it's like. Giving a person a crumb when what they need is a fucking meal, you know? And, and I think that that's what America needs, man, is they need to legalize cannabis. Um, totally. Literally, yeah. I think it'd be better for Oregon, for yeah. the safety of Oregon and everything, because we, we wouldn't attract as many people that um, really want to live a life in a state where weed's legal. Yep. And that and we love weed. I'm not saying we're all hood rats, but yeah, no, and it creates an interesting dynamic the with, the 40, with the cartels. But it's all good. <laughs> uh, schedule two drugs, high potential for abuse and dependence. Some medical qualities: Adderall, Oxycontin, meth, meth <laughs> cocaine. Like all it. five of those are way worse than weed. Yeah. Yes, all of them. That's so wild. Adderall is chemically very close to methamphetamine. I, I've known a guy that took Adderall most of his life in. He- he had a lot of characteristics of a meth head, like just. I used all to take Adderall. I have uh, ADHD, and it was prescribed to me when I was in school. The problem with yeah. Adderall in young people is it can cause uh, heavy depression. Yes. And I was already a depressed mm. kid, so it made me suicidal. And that yeah. was a bad side effect that, you know, once I got off the Adderall, I realized what was making me uh, feel bad, you know, and it took a couple of months. Or, Since it or, helps you focus, were you able to focus hard on how you wanted I to kill I did really yourself? well in school. <laughs> well, I did really well in school. And when I got depressed, it was more like, yeah, I just hated. I, th- I, feel, I felt like I was overwhelmed. You right. know? And that's, right. I think, where the sadness was coming from. But yeah, we're meth, not. cocaine. Like cocaine, I kind of get because low doses of cocaine in a lot of people actually shows some health benefits. Um, but meth. Oxycontin, which okay, Oxycontin is worse. Yes. That's that's one of the biggest reasons we have the opium uh, opioid epi- epidemic is because of Oxycontin. Totally, Vicodin as well. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it's nuts, man. So schedule three drugs: moderate potential uh, use and abuse dependency, acceptable medicinal qualities, doctor's prescription required. So testosterones. Steroids, ketamine, which is an interesting one. People are really getting into ketamine these really? days. People like ketamine a what lot. What does it do? Is that uh, it's a matter? tranquilizer. tranquilizer. Uh, so it's usually used for animals traditionally. Yeah, it's a horse tranquilizer. It's a horse tranquilizer. Yeah, and but it's just it's really so. Sedative. It's become a popular street drug and it's become a popular rave drug. 
I've, um, I've so heard a lot of people on the, on the street just talking Special about K. It. Yeah. yeah, it started in, in Europe. Um, well, it didn't start in Europe, but it, it got, got a lot big. of hype in Europe, and then it moved over to America, and now it's it's working its way through America. But there's a lot of people in uh, England and stuff that have been to treatment because they were fucking in K-holes and stuff like that yeah. and just using it way too much. Right. Um, just like anything, you know, it can be abused. Tylenol and codeine. So, man. scissor, man. All the rappers' drinks, man. Yes. So, that's some crazy Crunk. shit. Have you ever tried codeine? No, I haven't. It's pretty nuts. I've tried it. It'll fuck you up. You smoke a blunt or two, and you fucking I've drink heard, some scissor. I've heard about that, yeah. You you feel like you're drunk, but it's more of a like a foggy drunk. Like, your head isn't there. You know, you're, you're just on autopilot the whole time. I'll go down that. Um, yeah, and Tylenol. So Tylenol is up there, folks. Be careful with your Tylenol. Uh, schedule four, low potential for abuse, which I love that. Xanax? Is Xanax. Low? <laughs> low potential for abuse. Volume. Oh, volume. Ativan, which Ativan's, uh, you know, it's... I've heard of Ambien. Ambien definitely yeah. is abused. Oh, yeah. Ambien's abused by a lot of people. Eminem was addicted to sleeping pills. Yep. Tramadol is another uh, sleeping... Uh, it's a, it's a, in the similar family. It's like Zomas. and uh, I learned a lot about prescription drugs when I grew up in Florida. There was a ton of kids that I ran around with that would just like raid their parents' fucking medicine cabinets. And on and the streets, yeah. It's an easy way to make money, man. Xanax was, was one of the pills that I was introduced to, and it fucking straightened me out because after I took a few of them, I like didn't want to do them anymore. I had had a blackout on Xanax, and I did a bunch of shit I didn't remember. It was pretty nuts. Um, yeah, Schedule 5, the lowest potential for abuse. And it's just got like uh, a few other ones. Robitussin, uh, Lodomol. Pretty uh, much cold Lyrica medicine. Lyrica is another one. Yeah, a lot of just like cold flu medicine. Yeah. Uh, it won't get you fucked up unless you take a bunch of it. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it's, it's really crazy the way that we have this categorization of drugs. You know, because I think that these are all wrong. I think the first, like, three levels are completely all over the place. They definitely need to rearrange it for sure. We should definitely be a Schedule 5. But if you can't get the government... fix the government right now. Yeah, if you yeah. can't get the government to agree on basic things, if you can't get them to do the things that they're supposed to be doing, how do you get them to do any but change? As we've talked about before, until the old conservative white guys that are holding it back die off we can't re once they die off like then things can change a little bit more but i also think that in politics there's this ability to slow the wheels of time basically the, the political wheels of yeah, time well definitely. not even just filibusters is you need certain amount of votes in certain sections of congress yes. the senate fucking uh the supreme well, court just having the whole speaker of the house thing you know, with mccarthy when pelosi retired that how similarly all this how his party been, didn't have enough votes yeah. to vote him in as speaker of the house but we as a country can't we can't get anything done politically right now nobody is seeing eye to eye on a lot of things we're too busy shooting balloons so so, so how do you get any drug reform or any fucking you know Reform uh, for health care or fucking like Gradient was saying, in, in schools, a you know, how do you get a bunch of school money? I mean, if you use like, if you got the military on your side and you just pretty much did a coup and just murdered all the people that were holding it back, you could do that. But that would be a little extreme. So in a less extreme way, just when people, when enough of the older generation dies, that's when you just have younger but people. But by that time, in, we'll be dead. Or really old. Too old to do anything. Too old to have a too old to party at definitely at that point. But, well, yeah. too old to, old to really experience what we're trying to right now in our lives. Yeah. You know the things that are holding us back are fucking laws that were made a hundred years ago. Definitely. You know. Reefer. And yeah. I think it's in the Constitution they say like if laws are unjust, yo. You got to flip this shit no, up. <laughs> Tom, Thomas Jefferson wrote a, wrote a thing about when the government is hindering the people and it's yeah. not fair. Then it's the it's the duty of the people to overthrow. To rise up, but man. the government doesn't like reminding the people that at no. all. Even though that's we like pick in and school. choose. That's we like pick in, and choose. That's in school. Like they just really briefly mention. It and they're like, all right, so let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the eighteen eighties now. Okay. Because what scares them more, uh, I think, than anything in the country is the dumb people coming, knocking on their fucking door. Because there's a lot of people in this country, man, that just 
they would rather not have their things taken from them. Yeah. Their family, their fucking freedoms and stuff. Their land. And you just get enough people together with enough guns and you just start knocking on doors, man. It's going to be a problem. You know, we have an issue in this country right now with uh, rioting, you know. And it's only going to get worse, I think. Probably. Yeah. Especially as resources become more scarce and more Prices people. become higher yeah. and jobs become tougher. Yeah. yeah, it seems like any, like, I don't want to downplay anything, but a lot of things can trigger a riot that used to couldn't, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, there, when there was a greater sense of economic and social stability, yeah, people wouldn't, you know, riot quite as much. I think it's become really common in certain countries, but like in America, you you see it on a a different scale, I guess. Uh, But yeah, I think it's the way the media covers it too. Yeah, when something like that happens, when there is a riot, you know, it's media coverage for two weeks about it, you know, and about how things have changed and stuff's different. And yeah, how do you? How do you fix the the fact that the government doesn't want to work, the media is working against the people? Yeah. Well, you can either ignore it, you can move to a different country, which is also ignore it. Canada's looking better and better each day, it man. Is. It is. Or, I mean, there are certain people we you know. hang out with Tom McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> White boy. White boy. <laughs> or we can just be like Chet Hanks and just be like White Boy Summer, but... I mean, I mean, or you can, like certain people we know, try to you know change it for the better from the grassroots, or you can just trudge on day to day like we've been doing. And but I don't I, recommend it though. You there's know? no easy answer. If there was an easy answer, there's enough common people that would have started something. I feel if there's an easy solution to it, like a lot of the topics we talk about here, we talk about it because it's not an easy. It's not an easy thing like, oh, this is how we build this. Boom, boom, boom. Like, there's so many elements going on that. So what do you think? What do you think the solution could be? I think if you. Do you think it's going to come through through political change? I think if you were to gather people together and just like have more. I think a big thing is just. If 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 the if the media and the government decided to actually start being honest and have like an honest conversation and open lines of communication with the people, that would definitely be a good starting point because if it's like there's Andy, too many backroom there's, deals, there's too many backroom deals. So if they were just more straightforward with people and were actually like straightforward with people about what's actually going on, declassified more things, that would definitely make us trust more. And if anything, if if you can trust somebody, you're definitely more likely to work with someone if you have a line of communication. So do you think the American people would approve of all the things that the government's involved in? Absolutely not. Whether you're left, right, or whatever, there's definitely things that... So knowing that, do you think that with the people's approval, the government could be allowed to continue doing bad things? I don't you know, think if they, they basically give to. them the option of, like, there's a dictator down here in this country. And if we don't go and destabilize his country a bit, he's going to create a lot of problems for our, our very rich friends over here. But we have too many lobbyists and too many corporations that benefit from these things, these tribulations sure. happening, obviously. So. Coca-Cola. <laughs> oh, Coca-Cola, just to name a few. But, yeah. I mean, there's oil companies, there's all kinds, but I don't know. That's the problem is if we had a way to like also have more of a check on like giant corporations, that would help. But there's just so much money. That's the problem. So if you can buy every politician and you can buy every figurehead, then what's the point of the politics? Well, I mean, everybody's got a price. You know what I mean? I mean, Teddy Roosevelt was famous for doing, like, the antitrust laws, like the Sherman antitrust laws. Yeah, you gotta break people up. Yeah, like, his famous expression, like, speak softly and carry a big stick, which that's what I was talking about. But, I don't know, man, there's just so much money tied up now. There's so many people, so many problems, so much money that, right now, I'm just on this podcast and, you know, throwing out some ideas. But if people just learn to just communicate more, maybe not always be so isolated sometimes and like just be honest and have like straightforward conversations and relations with people that's always a good start i got a theory so there's nine billion people on this planet (laughs) i love that statistic because one day it'll be true there will be nine soon very soon so there's a lot of people on this planet 
and every single one of them is wanting a house and a car and a piece of land and a, a mansion family, and, and they have hopes and dreams everybody's got to have some yeah. a piece of the pie but what if there's not enough pieces of pie to go around? Then there's then, always going to be somebody suffering. You know what I mean? Then we're going to have to just deal with the fact that we are animals and we are subject to biological laws, just like a group of deer, or whether it's a bush or anything. If you have too much of anything, then diseases or predators or just life is going to thin the herd out, and that's we're at that point. We're I think at the approach, tipping point. We're at the tipping point where the herds kind of have to be thinned out. We're going to have to have a Thanos sort of thing happen and just. Kind of take out, take the garbage out, if you know what I mean. Just well, we've never had a society outlast like time. Like the Greeks did a good job for a while, I guess. The Romans and did the a Romans good while. The Mongolians did a good job for but, a while. But every civilization has fell. I mean, there are certain ones like Egypt, China that have you know lasted longer. Lasted long, like Japan. There's there's also ones in like Europe. There's also certain African ones that last a long time. But yeah, they're definitely. It's definitely like Egyptian or Chinese societies, much different now than it was four thousand years ago. But what I, I guess what makes us so arrogant to think that like we're not adapt to change and shit? Because there's more money in keeping our egos up. Exactly. Yeah. There's more money in keeping yeah. people in positions to where they just keep working. That's why we have these problems because there's too much money to change them. What truly. if people just went back to being nomadic? And fucking moving around. There'd from be place a lot of angry corporations, I think, roaming around with. with you worked squads. when you needed to, yeah. and you, you know, you survived off the land, and you fucking worked in your community a lot more. I think there would be a lot of people getting murdered if that happens. I think there'd be a lot of corporations that would get mad if, if everyone just decided to stop, and they would they would start threatening people. There would probably be death squads. Well, I going think around. there would be just like there is now. If you destabilize the current government, there's going to be somebody backing a group or a party. And then saying, well, you guys go out and create some chaos. Yeah. And once you create some chaos, I'll profiteer more off of that Absolutely. chaos. Any you war know, that, and that happens in any war, yeah. It's a constant re rehashing of the same story, I think. I think Definitely. we as people are fucking, we're destined to just keep doing the same repeat offense. Trevor, it's all right. That's all right, why good. we extended it. I know. I uh, want to talk about movie review. Sure. I want to talk about your... Uh, Undisputed 2? Yeah, so I watched Undisputed 2. It was a movie with Michael J. White as the main uh, protagonist. He was a guy over in, uh, just kind of like Ukraine, or, uh, yeah, similar. Former you know, Soviet Union Slavic, area. very Slavic yeah. area. But he gets uh, caught for a crime he didn't commit. They basically planted drugs in his bag. And so they found drugs in his bag. They take him into jail. And it's found out that he was brought to that jail to fight in this underground uh, boxing competition they have. Uh, Michael J. White being a professional uh, boxer and them having a champion in the prison. It's the follow-up to the movie with Ving Rhames and uh, Wesley Snipes. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, the first Undisputed was really good. If you ever want to go see a really cool movie, really good movie. this was right before Wesley Snipes lost his money. So he was still yeah. giving it a shot. He had a boxing match with the IRS, and it didn't work out so well. I feel so bad for him, yeah. man, but I don't know. He should have been better with his money, I guess. The IRS is fucked up, though. They will take anything. Oh, yeah. They don't give a shit, and they'll they sell them. everything else. They sell taxes. Yeah. They're also, they get way more from, like, the poor people. Like, they're designed to, like... Of course, you know oh, it's, yeah. it's a, easy to go after. It's the, a buy volume. They're definitely thing. going after right. like guys like us a lot more versus the guy that makes ten times as much. Well, it's as us. easier to yeah. to yeah. enter a thousand. Or, yeah, there's a lot more of us. Well, it's yeah. easier to get the pennies off the ground than go fight a dollar. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If there's a bunch right. of, we're definitely the pennies on the ground. We're kind of we might grumble, but. We're pennies. We can only do so much. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to go fight somebody that's got lawyers and it's got, you know, resources Doctors and stuff. Doctors and lawyers and such. People things, disappear, you know. With yeah. me, I'm, like, a pretty much a very liberal person in many regards. But, like, you, I don't want to tax people more just to create X government program than, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It, I don't know. Yeah, the government there's has no, a... tax burden is already really high. Yeah, there's, there's no easy answer. Well, the government's got a problem rich, with... <laughs> the government's got a big but problem with like that, yeah. their usage of money too. We we dedicate our money so weirdly. Anywho, uh, 
undisputed, what ends up happening is Michael J. White gets in with this guy, and they end up fighting. And in the beginning, he is a really talented boxer, but he doesn't have the uh, kickboxing ability. And his ring manager at the time, his like coach, he's a junkie, and he fucking switched water bottles on him, and he got him all drugged up during the first fight and got him knocked out. And then he ends up meeting this uh, older guy who's in a wheelchair. And he used to be like a Russian uh, commander or something. And he gets him to train, you know, to fight again. And he it's a really cool movie. It, it basically goes on to him winning the fight in the prison and uh, reuniting uh, the friend he made in prison with his niece. And there's a real emotional, like, reunion at the end. But I'd give it like 8 out of 10 boxing gloves. It was a really good movie, and there's a couple of other ones. I think there's four undisputed movies. And the third one, the enemy uh, from the second one becomes the protagonist, and then I think he's followed on into the fourth movie. But, yeah, Undisputed It's a really cool uh, series. There's another one that they came out with after that that was Ving Rhames' story afterwards, and it was called uh, Animal. All right, just proceed. Yeah, check out Animal, Mm -hmm. um, the Ving Rhames movie. Yeah. Animal, Ving Rhames. Yeah. So so this was the follow-up to his story after he lost to uh, Wesley Snipes. Animal 2? Well, Animal and then Animal 2. And, yeah, he has a bunch of different uh, movies, but I I love that, that... Oh, Terrence Howard. Yeah, yeah, they came up with a bunch of series of... Damn. Well, they came up with a bunch of different um, timelines, basically, for, <laughs> for what happened after this big fight. And so he was still, like, the heavyweight champion in prison, and it was just a bunch of people trying to fight him afterwards, you know? Mm. 5.7 yeah. on IMDb. Yeah, no, really Sorry. cool movie. Okay. <laughs> Direct I, to video, I, dude. I've seen yeah. Undisputed on Undisputed 2, but... Ving Rhames has this crazy ability to be in really good movies, but he does a lot of direct-to-video type of stuff, too. There's a lot of smaller B films. Nice. That makes sense. He was a big actor in the 90s. Didn't go as well for West Studi as it did for Wesley Snipes. He was the dude from uh, Last of the Mohicans. Nice. Oh. Yeah. He's Native American. Yeah, he's in a bunch of stuff. He was just in the newest Avatar movie. He was the, like, main chief or something. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Unless you want me to look up other shit. No, you're good, bro. Ballin'. Can I do my own review? You can do whatever you want. Cool. It's your show. So this is uh, Sons of Anarchy soundtrack, season one. Thanks on the suggestions from Chris. And it's like 45 minutes and it's a compilation album so various artists and the the song i want to mention is by a band called lions and the song is girl from the north country and it's like a little over four minutes but it's almost like a melodic punk song like most of the stuff there is definitely covers of like rock and roll and soul songs this was like gospel gospel and there's here's like this random melodic punk song in the middle of the album and it caught being a being a fan of punk myself it was just it caught me off guard but it's just it's just about a songs about a biker chick mm-hmm. and it's just like this almost like very calm rancid sort of song about a biker chick and it's just it's relaxing and it has like some almost some black metal tremolo picking in there a little bit but it's definitely lighter a little poppy but yeah it was really nice the thing i loved when they did the soundtracks for sons of anarchy was that each season they did a few different artists so they brought in different people to kind of feature on the the series they brought back a lot of similar people katie seagal she played in the series she's a very good singer she also played lila on futurama and uh peggy bird on the line she did the johnny cash car bird and line which is really good she's a great singer she does a lot of covers in the uh show um white buffalo Right, Buffalo, House of the one. Rising Sun, yes. yeah. Matador. He's on there, yeah. There's a lot of cool uh, groups. Um, Noah Gunderson, you wanted me to do a Noah shout Gunderson, out? Noah Gunderson, he the does forest, a lot of great ones. In the Forest ones. Rangers, that was, yep. that was on there quite a bit. So, yeah. Yeah, no, go check out some of the Sons of Anarchy soundtrack. They definitely have a few songs worth uh, rechecking, and I like a lot of their covers of stuff, too. I haven't heard season two yet, but I'm sure it's good. Uh, I think you'd like it. Yeah. 
right. uh, Chris's Cannabis Corner. As he's smoking cannabis. Perfect. Nothing much to report right now. I'm popping some more seeds. Um, going to start my next run here soon. I had some clones that failed. I took uh, a bunch of cuts of clones, but I didn't use any... Um, any clone adherent, usually there's like uh, different uh, things you can put on clone X and stuff like that, and it'll help the root systems to grow. So um, but that, I was in a pinch for time and money, and yeah. so I just cut a bunch of clones hoping that they'd root better. Then, but I had a temperature drop, you know, for like three days in a row, and it just threw the clones into a weird phase where they didn't want to root, and the humidity has to be very, very high in the room and because of the moisture content in the room and the heat i had to pump into the room it didn't allow them to root very well but that's part of the gamble you do you know when you fuck with plants is sometimes they do great sometimes they don't so the only thing to do is pop more seeds and we'll get some more girls going the thing i'm happy about is from my last run i have a ton of seeds that uh, i really liked so there's three different strains that i ran um, that I popped this first time around. I think I got like 10 seeds that started. So I'll go ahead and pop maybe like five more and see what I get out of that. And we'll see where we're at in a few months. Nice. Very cool. You got some gradient? Not really. Uh, chilling, living life. What's the topic? Is it reviews? Because I really... <laughs> Do you want to do? Do you want to review something? You certainly can. If you, uh, I don't know. I I feel like I don't want to talk too much because I don't like to put myself on camera. But uh, and, I, and you're the soothing background voice right now. I am the soothing. I'm the soother. What would you guys want to roll for like thirty seconds for a part where the video dropped out? It would just dropped out for like thirty seconds, and then what would you want to see? Like some some guy getting kicked in the nuts while you guys are doing the pod. That yeah. reminds me of like the Eric Andre show, like with uh, when. Um, <laughs> well, when the guy from Run DMC, the guy that uh, that did the the whole love show, mm. runs out. Run. The guy that always had the clock watch. What the fuck is his oh, name? Oh, that's Flavor Flav. 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 Public Enemy. Yeah, yeah. When, when Flavor Flav supposedly gets kicked in the face by Hannibal, and then it does that drop right after, so you're not sure if it actually finished or not. Like, that's what you want. Maybe just like some that. Eric Andre sort of just wild shit. Okay. Okay, that's your request. What do you want, Chris? I just want, there's a video of a guy from the early 2000s. He used to run around in a red wig uh. and a blue jumpsuit and a pair of sunglasses. And he, his whole deal was he'd run up to people and he'd kick them in the nuts. <laughs> I swear to God, if you look it up, you could probably find it. Guy right. in a red wig kicks people in the nuts. It used to come on the TV at like 4 in the morning. Fuck yeah. Such a weird thing to see on TV. <laughs> I'm sure some fights happened after after you just randomly. Well, your audience out. saw that shit about four minutes ago. They they saw that go. shit when the video dropped out. It's because I accidentally filmed in 4K. It takes a million gigabytes, and I was like, ah. ah. I deleted a video real quick, and then I started it in 1080. So no, you're good, man. Yeah. And that's what we're figuring out. It's yeah. dynamic. It's exciting. You want to talk about the uh, the Valentines versus the Vietnam party? That was something we you had me write down. Vietnam theme party versus Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Yeah, I like the Vietnam theme party. I feel like you can get more out of it than Valentine's. I feel like Day. the music. I feel like the Vietnam party have much better music because you have CCR, you'd have Rolling Stones, you'd yeah. have Jimi Hendrix, the, you'd the have playlist. the Animals, you'd have some Santana. Like the, the music playlist, playlist at the fucking Vietnam party would, would be very crunchy, but. You got to think of all the Vietnam vets that would be having flashbacks and shit because we'd be having gunners, you know, and fucking, yeah. we'd be having choppers in the background and stuff like that. There'd be lots of rice for everyone was... for all the times in the, the rice fields. Yeah. Pho, dude. We, we'd, <laughs> favorite food. we'd make our own fucking. Pho is really good. We'd make our own fucking uh, uh, holes and stuff I... that they have to clear out and <laughs> give them a handgun and a flashlight and be like, terrible. get in there. <laughs> You're terrible. I love uh, that from uh, Forrest Gump. They were always throwing them in the fucking holes. <laughs> also, we would give them oranges all the time. Like, don't think about Asian orange. We just hand them oranges randomly. Real. That would be pretty fucked up. We just use butane instead of napalm to light everybody <laughs> on fire at the end. Terrible. It's a theme. Uh, so yeah, we got five minutes. Um, if you guys want to shit on any more Asians, I'll remind you that I am ugly. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to shit on Asian. You ever, see, you ever see Gran Torino? 
Yeah, oh I yeah, I love that That's movie. Such a good movie. <laughs> such a wild but, movie. But I love when he's yeah. like fighting the gang members. He's like, "We well, stack hooks like you six <laughs> feet high. Yeah. Use your sandbags." I was like, "God damn, bro, those yeah. are people." He's right. like, "Yeah, but he probably used them as sandbags." Right. It's like, yeah, you gotta fucking use people sometimes. Wowza, <laughs> pretty rough. That was a really cool movie. Grant yeah, Serino was spoiled really the ending. Dope. Spoiler alert. He he's dies. reaching shot. for. They think he's reaching for a gun, right? He's reaching because for a, his lighter, his lighter. Yeah, yeah. So because he had had he had had tension down. for some local gang members. There have been some definite tension, so they were on edge of this. It's guy. crazy how yeah. gangs are in like Los Angeles and stuff, man. You have like the Asian Latin gangs, and then you have like the hard Asian gangs, and then you have Asian La- like. There's Sacramento- so many different. <laughs> yeah, it, no, Sacramento so many- too is one of those places. We had we had a whole thing with Vietnamese Cholas gangs. And and we, fucking, yeah, we had yeah. we had like people from different Russian countries. crime and all this. It's pretty wild. Why do Asians hate other Asians from different countries? Maybe you can that's kill a stereotype. That we would never, but fuck the Chinese anyway. Yeah, see? <laughs> no, yeah, no. I mean, it's it's interesting. I know Japan and China's had a very long and tenuous relationship. I mean, think so. about like you know. Uh, well, Japan's always had cooler shit, and China's always talked about how they yeah. got cooler shit. And then Japan they had yeah. way longer time for those exactly. rivalries to develop. I think because like right now, New Yorkers don't like Alabamans. You know, Oregonians don't like Californians, but we've only had that shit going on for like 200 years. A couple hundred years, yeah. yeah. But there's definitely in like the much older rivalries, like obviously like, you know, the whole thing between like the Jewish population and the, what's now known as Israel and like the, the people that are more Palestinian, but that borders keep change. Right. They've had 2,000, 3,000 years of not liking each other. It's just... You know the the borders have changed, and a few things like now the Palestinians have have Islam versus beforehand they had more of a core thing, hmm. or other religions. But yeah, it's, they've had such a long time. But shout out to Islam, bro. It's only been around fourteen hundred years. That shit's taken off. Yeah, it's the they fastest Islam growing. Really into it. It's the fastest <laughs> growing religion because a lot of third world countries. It's like if you see all over North Africa, a lot of places where there's serious problems, Islam's like, hey, here's a quick solution. Follow us, we'll help you out. But religion's just, always been used. Christianity's to done minds. it forever. Like yeah. that's, that's minds what and we do. hearts of the people, man. Minds and hearts of the people, and and you can do a lot with desperate people, and Definitely. that's why religion thrives in bad countries sometimes. You, you know? have a guy with a hole in his, you know, hole in his stomach and Christian a hole missionaries in his pocket, and you hand Africa. him a gun. Like, hey, do these things. Christian missionaries in Africa, bro. They're teaching, you know, African people, Chi- or not Chinese. What is it? They're teaching them. Uh, Mandarin and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, they 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 send them to China to teach Christianity. It, like they send them all around the world and stuff. Huh. But yeah, you go to a country and you convert the people, and then you make them missionaries to go to other countries yeah, to it's you know. Wild. Yeah, I don't know, man. Religion's tough. <laughs> Religion's real tough. Because yeah, science is science and religion are starting to become one and the same thing. And I don't think people are taking it very well. Mm. Yeah. What if there is some extent to which um, a dogmatic view, people can pretend that it's just based on science. Yeah. But but people don't really read. No. <laughs> like the average person that is like doesn't read. Where's the a facts. button that says believe science? Yeah. Has not read a scientific paper this year or something. No. You know what I mean? Like so no. they believe the scientists that tell them the thing. But how many yeah. of these people have like actually read like? St- like Stephen Hawking's like briefer history of the universe and like read these things and thought about probably not as many you're taking everything for like face value you're saying well I don't have the information but the smartest people that we know say this is what it is you know I, I think that like I think emotion and like feeling something that has been in our human nature for a long time I think it plays a lot into how we feel and how we deal with the world that we interact with you know, and I think that that, with the science that we know, kind of is how religion is, you know, brought up, man. Like, people talk about miracles and stuff. So, I can nothing more miraculous than, like, 
the human body and fucking certain things it can do and stuff. I'm wearing an ICP shirt right now. Don't talk to me about miracles. Yo, miracles, bro. Oh. <laughs> what about magnets? How do they work? Isn't a volcano just an angry hill? My kids just look like Shaggy. And, and no, his kids look like Shaggy, and my kids also look, look like Daddy. Shaggy. Yeah, that's like the SNL spoof. Shout out, you guys should watch that. I, I'm going to show you the SNL yeah, spoof in Time Forever of the song Miracles. It's funny is every time we watch workaholics or movies that Chris has noticed this whenever they, they like show songs every time like I know this song because I grew totally. around, I grew up around Juggalos homies and I've heard a lot of it. homies yeah I've I've heard the great Malenko album like I've heard these uh, albums I'm yeah not, no he showed me this before oh, okay <laughs> that's the funniest part so about funny. being on a stoner podcast is he thinks I haven't seen this right he's right. showed me this twice now oh, and he's wow, like, I gotta show this anyway. to you <laughs> stop the video anyway he's like. NBC's got him by the balls. Oh, wait, no, it's right yeah, here. Yeah, right there. Oh, but this is the kick spit. What the fuck is a clock? <laughs> <laughs> Why do some mounds look like presidents? That's what it uh, is. No, the whole video is pretty much crying out for laughing. It's, I don't know, pretty funny. Good shit. All right, you about ready, Trevor? Yeah. Whoop, whoop to my juggalo fam. There you go. Uh, Once again, I endorse nothing. I'll try to say that at the end of this show. Even what up ninjas <laughs> what up ninjas that's pretty funny anyone have any last things no you're I got on a, it man I got a closing quote here be yourself because everyone else is already taken Oscar Wilde Oscar Wilde's taken apparently is that Olivia Wilde's hot uh, uh, cousin yeah <laughs> Oscar <laughs> definitely <laughs> To clocks work. <laughs> there you go. Right, Clockwork orange. Clockwork orange. Later, everybody. All right. Take care, people. Eat those cakes.